there, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I'm coming at you with a brand new year and brand new fun projects for our Fat Quarter Club. So this month, I got inspiration from the We All Sew blog that is Bernina's blog, and my friend Erica has the cutest, most precise projects, and I have to tell you, you're going to love her instructions, even if you don't watch this video. However, we did add some extra things in with it. One of them was embroidery, and another one was using our circular embroidery attachment and our eyelid attachment. And I'm using this uh, K Facet 475 machine just because it's so cute. And don't you think it looks great with my yellow cabinet? <laughs> anyway, so just like every other month, we have the instructions for this linked right in the description of this video. You can also find the instructions on our Bernina of Naperville website, and it's right there under Fat Quarter Club. So hopefully this will give you any additional stuff that you need, plus you'll get the link to the We All Sew project. Now, let's talk a little bit about this project. I am stuck in my formative years. I think some of you know that, and I've been feeling a little bit nostalgic lately, and uh you know what? I thought there's nothing better than to get the feels out than to look through my old 45 RPM record stash. <laughs> so let's go see how this came to be. So we took our inspiration this month from a blog post that I found on WeAllSew.com. That's Bernina of America's blog. And it was written by my friend Erica Molvina, and it was to make coasters that resembled 45 records. I mean, we all remember 45 records, right? And remember the little adapter that you had to put in them so that they would fit on your regular turntable? Well, I thought it would be really fun. And what we've done, um, in addition to elaborating on Erica's blog post, so we took her measurements and her basic meat and potatoes of the design, but then we added a little extra, a few extra things. So first things first, I designed or digitized you a little insert that's going to be embroidered on your embroidery machine if you have an embroidery machine. And I used glow in the dark thread in the top and regular bobbin fill in the bobbin. And um, you just need to embroider as many of those as you want to make records. So let's have a look at the fabric we're using. We're using three prints from Ruby Star from the sugar cone collection. They're the gummy bears, the straws, and the push pops. I thought these were really appropriate. And then some of you, um, we kind of split the kits. So some of you are getting this black fabric that's a tone on tone, and others of you are getting a different tone on tone fabric. And then you're also getting bright color solids. Sweet Tangerine from Art Gallery Pure Solids. And then the other one is Tula Pink for Free Spirit. And that one is in the Cosmo color. So before you get your knickers in a twist, I wanna talk a little bit about 45s. So I pulled some 45s out of the archives here. And first of all, let's just look at a 45 record. So look at this. They're about seven inches. And this one, this one's a treasure. Look at this. You know that this Careless Whisper song is now 40 years old. Can you believe that? I, it, it makes me feel, how can this song be 40 years old when I bought this 45 when it was brand new and I'm still only 30? I don't know, but it's, it's weird how time works that way. So we line them up and you can see that indeed these are going to turn out just the size of this 45 record. Now this is black with like a pretty little design inside. So we're going to take our solids and that's what this part of our little coaster is going to be. And then the inside is going to be our print fabric from Ruby Star. But you're probably saying, Gail, I've never seen a 45 record that was any other color other than black. Well, let me show you this. So this was a promotional 45 from Hall and & Oates. And you know, it's really sad because I hear that they're in court feuding and that's, that's just not right. But I remember very well the day that I got this at Waxy Maxi's. I was with my mom and she really wanted, you know, they had a funny music video for this or whatever. And she was looking for this 45. And they gave it to her and she was like, I can't take this for free. I have to pay you. And it was like, oh my God, so embarrassing. But look at this one. It's red. So 
Vinyl can come in different colors. And those of you that have a Cricut machine, you know vinyl comes in all different colors, right? And then um, then I was just thinking about, like, as I went through some of these others that I have, you know, how exciting it was to get these 45s because they had B-sides. And, like, the B-side of this Union of the Snake is, I can remember the Secret October song, and oh, I can just hear it right now. And then, of course, you know, I, I'm not going to joke around with you. You know, one of my favorite bands is U2. And look, I found these. This is, uh, I think both of these are from, this is from Rattle and Hum. This is from The Unforgettable Fire. But once again, here, here, are, here are their little B-sides. Hallelujah, here she comes. That's another, that's a really good one, actually. So, anywho, if that was a little trip down memory lane, let me tell you. So, let's now take this fun retro inspiration and make something cool. And we need some fun supplies. And we'll start with our circular embroidery tool. Now this, we're gonna use this in conjunction with our number 20 foot. Um, and this is just gonna help us sew in a perfect circle because that is how we make our perfect circles. It makes our perfect seven inch circle. It makes our perfect four inch circle or whatever size that is. We'll get to that in a minute. And it helps us sew all of these on together. All you need to do is just be accurate when you make your center position there. So that's, that's our circular embroidery attachment. Then we're gonna be using our eyelet attachment. Now the eyelet is what makes that perfect little hole right there, because you know, we need that to fit on our spindle of our turntable. And so this is a kit and I have an open kit here and you're gonna cover the feed dogs on your machine with this piece. You're gonna insert the little plastic nubbin that you need that's gonna be the perfect size for the hole. Then you need the screw to screw it onto your sewing machine and then it comes with a special foot and it also has some special awls and some special hole cutters. And I'm gonna show you how to use that as well. There's a couple other things that you're gonna need for this. One is um, some fusible woven SF-101 or the Shape Flex in sizes that coordinate with your cutting instructions. So the album part which would be the solid bid or the tone on tone, that those are, you're gonna need two eight inch squares for that. Then you've got these middle pieces and you're gonna need two four inch squares of those. So the SF-101 also goes on those. Then you're gonna pick from your stash a gray and or whatever color, you could pick black, you could pick whatever. I had some of this in my stash. So I stitched my little 45 records insert the 45 RPM adapter pieces onto this. And then um, I put that aside, but I also back this with the SF-101 as well. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you can certainly just find other pieces from your stash here and put those in the middle. That's totally fine. Or the other solid pieces could coordinate. You're also going to need some fusible fleece. Now, you don't need to back each solid with fusible fleece, just one piece. So one piece per coaster. But that's going to be cut at eight inches. So here are the little 45 record adapters that I stitched out with the glow in the dark thread. You can see that looks pretty cute. And um, all I did, there is my fused piece that made that a little bit more robust and then the stabilizer and now when I'm ready I'm just going to cut these evenly spaced and then this will go on to our record. So let's look at what we have per record. So we've got one piece that just has fusible woven or SF 101 on the back and then another piece with the fusible fleece and the SF 101. And then we have two pieces that are the four inch squares with both have the fusible woven on the back as well as our embroidered piece. So I'm using this pen and this is the kind of pen that is 
erasable with an eraser item that it has, but also it is water soluble. So we're gonna mark and find the centers on each of our four inch pieces. So just draw a two inch line vertically and horizontally down the piece. And on one of these, you're gonna mark on the back side. And then on the other piece, I'm just gonna mark a little dot in the center. So I'm just gonna use the two inch square at the top and the bottom to make a little dot there right in the middle. And then on the back side of our eight inch record pieces, we're also gonna mark in four inches horizontally and four inches vertically. Now I've placed my circular embroidery attachment over here on my machine and I'm going to screw it in with the screw and the screwdriver that's provided in the kit. And I bet you always wondered what those little holes were on your machine, right? And this is gonna go into the hole that's closest to the foot. Now the circular embroidery attachment is like a little compass and it's got this like rubber grippy thing on this tack for lack of a better word. And we wanna move that tack for our record at the three and a half inch mark because three and a half inches times two is a seven inch record. And if you're not getting it aligned just perfectly, no worries, get it close. And then on your straight stitch, you can use your needle position and kind of tweak your needle position so that that radius will stitch accurately. Once you have the circular embroidery attachment in place, we are gonna start with our piece that has the fleece on the back. And because that's on the wrong side, we're gonna lift that up carefully and place that over the tack of our circular embroidery attachment. Then we're gonna take our other black piece and we're gonna place that right side down, taking our little tack and putting it right in the center part. And it, just so that you don't impale yourself, put that little rubber thing back on there to hold it in place. And now after you've aligned, you've tweaked your needle position and all of that, we're gonna just stitch the straight stitch at the default length. And this does a really nice job of keeping everything nice and flat. So once you get to where you started, you're gonna stop. If you have the thread cutter on your machine, I highly recommend using that. And then you're going to use your scissors. I just grabbed my applique scissors. This might not be exactly how you're supposed to use them, but it doesn't matter. And you're gonna trim about an eighth of an inch away from your seam line. Then you're going to remove your work from your circular embroidery attachment making sure that you don't lose track of that original little point. And then you're gonna cut into that top layer that does not have the fleece and make a little hole so we can turn our record piece right side out. To kind of push that seam nice and flat. And then we wanna give this a good steaming with our Laura Star iron. And don't worry about that hole that's there because we are gonna cover that up with some other stitching. So now that this is flat and pretty, it's time to restack everything over at our sewing machine. So you're gonna take those pieces that we marked, our little center pieces, and we're gonna stack them properly. So we're gonna start with our piece that has been marked on the inside. And we also need to adjust our radius. And this time the radius is gonna be an inch and seven eighths from the needle. And I use my ruler to measure that. And I actually like to mark this an inch and seven eighths, but I wanna definitely move my needle position. And when you do this, you may wanna make sure you leave some wiggle room on either side of the needle because it's really important when that needle swings to the right that you're going off of the edge of what you're appliqueing. And when the needle swings to the left, it catches your applique. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So there I am putting our piece of fused fabric with it wrong side up. 
And I'm also checking to make sure that everything fits under my foot. And I did adjust my circular embroidery attachment properly. Then we're going to grab our record player. And you can see my little crosshairs are still showing up there. So I'm going to put that over the tack. And then I'm going to place the final piece that has that little dot right on top of the tack. And I will go around this first with a straight stitch. And after you do your straight stitch, you're going to trim the top layer really close to that stitching line. And I'm using my duckbill scissors to do that. And I didn't, I don't even remove the piece off of the circular embroidery attachment. I just let it turn naturally as I trim. And the top layer goes pretty easily. And you do want to try to get as close to that stitching line as possible um, without trimming the initial piece, right? <laughs> then after this one's done, you're going to lift your record and you're going to peek under there and see that extra piece that's right there. And now you're going to gently like hold that and turn it and trim. Now this is the back side, so this is a little bit more challenging to trim. And I twisted my um, applique scissors around just to kind of get a better cut. And I'm kind of just like pushing that up there and feeling it, making sure I'm getting close. And then once you trim and you make sure you get everything, and once you do that, you're going to set your machine up for a zigzag stitch. So the settings that I use are four and a half wide for the first pass. And make sure that you move your needle position so that the right side of the needle is going, when the needle swings to the right, it's going just off the edge of the fabric. And then that four and a half inch wide will get a big enough bite of the fabric so it doesn't unravel. And as I go around the first time, I haven't really changed my stitch length. Then I'm going to adjust the stitch length again on the next pass at 0.4 millimeters. And then what's fun about this is if you go around with the satin stitching and you wanna fill it in a little bit more, you can just make two passes. Once you have gone around your applique piece, it's time to add that little 45 RPM adapter embroidery. And you're gonna center that small hole right on your tack. And then this time, okay, if you're not using this embroidery piece, you're gonna set the radius of your piece about seven eighths of an inch. Otherwise, I kind of use the left edge of my foot around my little symbol there. And we're gonna go back to a straight stitch. And however you wanna move your needle position, I would you know, recommend that you go somewhere close to the middle of the foot with your needle position, close to center needle position, because when we go around again and we do our stitching, we wanna make sure that we can take a bite over the middle of this so it doesn't come undone. And the same principle applies for this piece, and that's we want to go a straight stitch around, then we're gonna trim with our applique scissors, and then we're gonna pick our zigzag stitch again, and we're gonna go around this piece. Go around with your sparse zigzag set at whatever the default length is, and then you're going to go around once and then adjust that stitch length to 0.4 millimeters. Once you get around that circle, you're gonna to change to your straight stitch again. And I like to take the left side of my foot and line it up with my satin stitching. And then you're just going to stitch your straight stitch all the way around. And of course, it's personal preference, but if you'd like a thicker looking stitch, you can go around twice or three times, whatever you prefer. But once you're finished stitching, you're going to lift your foot, lift your needle, and then move the side, the left side of your presser foot again to match that previously stitch line. And I did three rounds. I, you know, I did a, a close line, a medium line, and then another line, but you can choose however many grooves you wanna put in your record. 
And then when you're doing this, you just want to be sure that you don't um, over push or pull or turn or twist your record because it is really easy to make a spiral by accident. <laughs> but once you have completed your pieces, you're going to drop the feed dogs on your machine and you're going to head over to your drawing board and look at the pieces of your eyelid attachment. There is a 3 16th of an inch hole cutter that comes with your eyelet attachment and that's what we're going to use to cut the hole in our record. And then you get these other little pieces that insert into the needle plate cover of the eyelet attachment. I'm going to call them the little nubbies. And you're going to pick your nubby based on this size of this hole and you don't want the piece to go directly onto and over that nubby. You want it to be kind of tight. So I've also picked the nubby that is 3 16 of an inch and it inserts in your needle plate so that when you do a zigzag stitch, that little notch in the nubby is gonna be under the needle. And then there is our number 92 foot. So I'm gonna put those aside for a minute and now we're gonna use that block to cut a hole right in the center of our record. And I'm just gonna place my 3 16 of an inch nubby cutter <laughs> and I'm going to just lean into that and cut because this whole cutter is sharp but that's a lot of layers on that record so maybe two times is the charm here there we go all right now it's machine time so I've inserted number 92 foot onto the machine and then I'm going to take my needle plate cover and there's a little dot that you're going to put in that other little single hole there. And then when you put that on there, the screw hole lines up with the hole in the needle plate cover. And you're just going to use your screwdriver to screw that into position. And you're going to select your number two zigzag stitch on the machine. And I just pick it with my four and a half millimeter stitch width. You might need a little bit of muscle to put that over your nubby but I also use my hand wheel to kind of turn my needle into position because we want to make sure that when that needle swings to the right, it's going just off of the hole. And as you secure this, at first you're going to go a little bit faster to not have a satin stitch so close together. And then as you tack everything down, you're going to slow down to make a nice satin stitch around this hole. And it's up to you and what particular preference you like. I like to have a nice um, dense satin stitching on here, but nonetheless, just go around until you get it to your liking and you're going to press your thread cutting button. And now your record is complete. Yay. Okay, so let's have a little look at our creations. They're pretty cute. I think they're suitable for a coaster and you know, they give me the retro vibes that I love. Here's one out of the brighter colors. This was our special edition one, remember, or our promotional 45. But then once again, like I told you, if you don't have embroidery, it's okay to just leave that centerpiece blank like we did on this one. This one might be, do you remember that song? Oh, yeah, you're welcome for not letting that one stew around in your head for too long. <laughs> I think that's called an earworm, by the way. And then when we did this in club, we had a lot of comments about all of the different things that we could do with this. And I used to have this Tumblr set that was misquoted lyrics. And then I just thought it would be super appropriate. So I made a final one and I used my combi mode and my alphabet to spell out this, well, I mean, come on, this is a classic song, but I don't think the lyrics are really on a dark desert highway, cool whip in my hair. But you know what, Don Henley, you can always rewrite another classic, right? <laughs> All right, what do you think? Are you gonna add some coasters that are little records into your home decor. I mean, I really do like that touch of adding misquoted lyrics because you know there's a ton of them out there. I 
I'm sure right now your, your head is racing for some other things that you could put on your coaster as well. I certainly thank you so much for watching the video and don't forget, signing up for the Fat Quarter Club is not a commitment. You sign up and then each month you're gonna get an invoice and you can pay it or not pay it depending on if you want the fabric or you wanna do the project. So if you wanna see more tutorials and other fun stuff, you're also going to want to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Now, fire up that Walkman, put on your headphones, and crank it up to 10, and listen to those 45s. <laughs> See ya!